it seems like the question after earnings is, how long do you expect the sales downturn to really last? Uh, hi, Alex, and thanks for having me. Obviously, that's a great question, and uh, nobody can know with certainty. Um, we have the benefit with, at Yum with our th you know, brands, KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut, being in over 140 countries, of seeing some of the learnings that are coming out of markets that have experienced this a little bit longer than others, for example, many of the markets in Asia. So I think the recovery curve um, will vary by markets, and it will vary depending on the kinds of stores you have in each market. If you have a heavy preponderance of dine-in business, uh, that takes a little bit longer to come back. The off-premise business mm -hmm. actually is pretty well designed for this environment and come back a lot quicker. Uh, one analyst was talking about sort of trying to glean what that meant, and it said 20% of global units are still closed, so you could be looking at you know double-digit 30% uh, sales decline. When do you expect to have that kind of visibility? Well, what we've seen is we're off the lows when it comes to unit closures. At one point, we had 11,000 of our over 50,000 units closed. Um, now we're below 10,000, and we're reopening units every day. In fact, we just announced that we're re be reopening with about 100 units in, 100 KFC units in the U.K. Uh, by next week. So we're, we're on the other side, we believe, of the closures. Uh, and you know, as you know, in a lot of markets right now, uh, people are reopening dining rooms. So we're on the upswing, uh, but you know, we can't predict, and uh, like anybody else, uh, we can't predict exactly the timing of all the reopenings. That's why a lot of mm -hmm. companies you're seeing are withdrawing guidance uh, and, until we get a better sense for what these curves look, by, look like. But you also see uh, you know, Yum China, one of our, you know, the largest um, licensed business that we have, uh, report the other day and talk about the fact that they're on the other side of this and uh, that they're seeing all the, almost all of their stores reopened. I think they're at 99% of the stores reopened now. So that's all very encouraging for us. And, uh, again, we love the fact that we have this off-premise business uh, that is uh, mm -hmm. in really designed to succeed in these times. Uh, as you reopen, um, what have you noticed are your bigger issues as you reopen, regardless of the demand on the customer side, in terms of just your operations? Well, the reopening challenge is really, it's two different stories. In the United States, uh, the vast majority of our stores are open because our business is very heavily skewed to off-premise. Ninety-five percent of our KFCs and Taco Bells in the U.S. have drive throughs on them, and obviously our pizza business in the U.S. is designed for off-premise consumption with delivery and carry-out. And one of the challenges we faced very early on all around the world uh, was this idea that customers wanted contact list or contact free uh, access to our brands, which is why we rolled out contact list delivery and contact list carry out. And that's working quite well in the U.S. So the challenge of reopening dining rooms in the U.S. is now a new challenge, and we're going to take our time on that and better understand what the landscape is, you know, what the challenges are going to be, learn from others that go early on that, and we'll make sure that whatever we do, we never put our customers or our employees in danger. Internationally, you know, again, varying by market, uh, the challenge of reopening uh, can vary. What we're seeing in a lot of markets is the best way to reopen a store is to start by reopening the off-premise business and then shift to opening the dine-in over time as we learn more. Are you having any issues with uh, food supply chains? I think you're seeing a lot of headlines about uh, the supply chain and the impact on it. Uh, and certainly when you have such a massive shift with restaurants closing and people going to grocery, um, the supply chain was not designed, you know, for the mix that we're seeing now between grocery and restaurant. Um, so that's pressuring it, and coupled with, you know, plant closures uh, is creating this pressure on the supply chain. For us, you know, we have good visibility to our near-term supply chain and feel good about that. We're obviously working with suppliers to create contingency plans uh, for the longer term. Uh, but I think we'll, we'll work through it in partnership with our suppliers. We're also fortunate, our biggest market, the United States, we have a purchasing co-op with real uh, fantastic expertise that does a great job of buying on behalf of all of our brands in the U.S. Uh, so that scale gives us some advantages in working with suppliers to make sure that we get the supply we need. Uh, is there one item, like, are you seeing meat shortages? Like, is there one thing that you're like, I really got to make sure that we get in this? Well, obviously, everybody is talking about beef as being one of the yeah, – beef and pork being uh, the, the biggest challenges. For our businesses, you know, um, chicken is our biggest protein at KFC, obviously, with KFC being half of our global business. Um, so we're very focused on that, but that's not as pressured as beef and pork. Uh, but beef is a critical ingredient for us in our Taco Bell business in particular. So that's where our focus is right now is just making sure we have that assured supply of beef. 
So if you tie all these in, things in together, sort of the issues that you confront when you're opening stores and how to make them safe, as well as dealing with food supply chains, are, are, are we looking in a world where businesses like yours are going to be facing structural lower margins uh, going forward as you have to rejigger all your businesses? You know, look, that we're looking at a different world, but I wouldn't conclude that we would have lower margins. In fact, if you think about it, uh, what's happening right now is consumers are looking for uh, things that can satisfy their need to serve a larger party size, right? People are eating at home, and they're ordering more um, than they would on a typical uh, ticket. You know, we used to have a lot of individual tickets. We don't have those tickets now. So you're seeing our brands and all the brands in, that are open right now in the restaurant industry um, start to cater to that larger party size. For us, that's you know KFC serving a $30 family meal where you can get enough food to feed your family tonight and something for the family tomorrow night, uh, or Pizza Hut with uh, their big dinner box offering. So those kinds of offers are obviously very efficient for us and have you know, good margins in them, um, but we still have to provide great value to customers in these time, challenging times where, where money's tight. Um, but you're also seeing you know some deflation in supply chain as well, uh, things like cheese are, you know, way down from their typical level you know, costs, and you know that's going to help restaurant businesses over the long term if it stays down there. So I wouldn't necessarily conclude that you know that margins are going to get squeezed. I think the the biggest issue people are facing right now is the top line, and particularly if you're in the dine-in business, if you don't have, you know, if you have dining rooms that have a lot of social distancing in them, which means a lot of seats have been lost in your dining room, it's just going to impact your capacity. Again, for us, particularly in the U.S., um, not as big of an issue given our off-premise business, and you're certainly seeing business shift off-premise. So it's sort of a re-scrambling of the landscape that we all operate in, and uh, there'll be some big changes, and I think a lot of these changes will stay over time, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be bad. It just means you need to be nimble and adapt to them. And companies like us who have had brands that have you know, been around for 50, 60 years that's our hallmark. Uh, our, our team is great at brand building and listening to what consumers want and meeting their needs, whatever they are. And you're seeing that uh, across the industry, people shifting and uh, offering new kinds of offerings and meeting new consumer needs with things like contactless, and that will continue.